Good morning, boys and girls. It's good to be with you this morning. We're going to start by lighting our candle as we would if we were together in this room. The light reminds us that Jesus is the light of the world and Jesus is with us. He's with me here as I tell you the story, and he's with you in the places where you are watching and listening to the story. Let's start by praying to God. You can put your body in a comfortable position that will help you focus on God and think about him while we pray. I like to fold my hands, but you can do a different position. Some people like to put their hands open to God so find out, find the position that's comfortable for you. Dear God, thank you for loving us so much. Thank you for all of the friends who are worshiping with us from different places. Thank you that you are with each of us. In fact, living inside of us, even when we're far from each other, we pray for you to speak to us through today's story and through the words of the Bible, thank you for giving us your spirit. And thank you for never leaving us alone. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, boys and girls, today is a special Sunday. We've had a lot of special Sundays, haven't we? We've had, let's see, we've had Easter Sunday. But well, before Easter Sunday, we remembered on Good Friday the crucifixion of Jesus when Jesus gave his life for us on the cross and his blood spilled out for us. And then three days later, we celebrated Easter Sunday when we remembered the resurrection of our Lord Jesus, when God brought Jesus back to life and gave him a new body. And then Jesus walked on the earth and spent time with his friends and his followers for 40 days. And then he ascended into heaven. And we remembered this on Ascension Sunday, that Jesus was taken back up into heaven. And the angels said, he's going to come again the same way he has left. He will return. So after Jesus left, he told his disciples to wait in Jerusalem and that he would send a special gift to them. And last week we celebrated Pentecost Sunday, the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came upon those who were following Jesus and filled them with the Spirit of God. So today, another special Sunday, today is Trinity Sunday. I'm going to write that word so you can see it. Trinity. This part of the word, T-R-I, tri, makes us think of tricycle or triangle, right? So how many sides does a triangle have? You guessed it, three sides. Well, the Trinity is made of three persons. So on this Trinity Sunday, we are remembering that our God is three in one. God is Father, God is Son, and God is the Holy Spirit. Three in one. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They are each different persons in the same God. It's a confusing thing, but it's a very important part of our faith. We believe that God is three in one. So today, I want to read you the stories from the Bible of the things that I've just showed you the pictures of. We've remembered the Ascension and we remembered the day of Pentecost. And today we're just going to read those stories from one of my favorite Bible books. I think you will enjoy it. This 
part of the story is called God Sends Help. It comes from the book of Acts, chapter 1 through 5. Jesus' friends and helpers huddled together in a stuffy upstairs room. Even though it was sunny outside, the shutters were closed. The door was locked. Wait in Jerusalem, Jesus had told them. I am going to send you a special present. God's power is going to come into you. God's Holy Spirit is coming. So here they were waiting. Actually, mostly what they were doing was just being scared and hiding. You can't blame them. Their best friend had left. The important people and the leaders were after them and Jesus had given them a job they didn't know how to do. As they waited, they were praying and remembering Remembering how from the beginning of time, God had been working out a secret rescue plan. <gasps> Suddenly, a strong wind filled the room, whistling through the walls, rustling the straw on the floor, and there on everyone's heads, shining in the gloom, were flickering flames. Fire that didn't burn them or hurt them. And something more, inside their hearts, they felt a strange heat, almost as if all the coldness and hardness were melting away, as if their broken hearts were mending, and God was giving them brand new hearts, hearts that could work properly. How it happened, they didn't know, but they knew God's power had struck their hearts ablaze and Jesus himself was coming to live inside them. They had seen Jesus go away, but now he was closer than he had ever been inside their hearts. And this time, nothing could ever separate them. Jesus would always be there with them, loving them, whispering the promise that would get rid of the poison and the terrible lie and the sickness in their hearts. God's wonderful promise to them, you are my child and I love you. Make your home in me as I might make my home in you, Jesus said. Could it be heaven was coming into their hearts? Then they threw open the shutters. Sunlight flooded their room as love flooded their hearts. And the little room was filled with happy noises, dancing feet, singing, laughing. They unlocked the door and surged out into the streets as if they had never been afraid. Peter spoke in a loud voice so everyone could hear. Jesus died for you, he said, because he loves you. God has made him alive again. He has rescued you. People stopped and listened. The words sank down deep into their hearts and worked like a medicine that makes you well, like the antidote to a deadly poison, like a kiss that wakes you from a deep sleep. Stop running away from God, Peter said. Run to him instead so he can love you and make you free. And Peter told them the wonderful story of God's love God's never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love. How Jesus had come and all that had happened. There were lots of people from faraway countries in Jerusalem that day. They couldn't speak the same language, but they listened to Peter. Everyone could understand what he was saying. 
in their own languages. Many people believed and became Jesus' new friends and helpers. And the wonderful news of Jesus spread like sparks from a fire to villages, towns, cities. Every day, more and more people believed. And so it was that family of God's children, his special people, grew. One man was watching. I'll stop this, Saul said. But this was God's plan, and nothing in all the world would ever be able to stop it. I hope you enjoyed this story, boys and girls. I want to teach you a song that will be our closing prayer. Did you know you can sing your prayers? The Psalms are, are songs that people have written as prayers to God. But we're also going to sing a prayer today as we finish. This is a prayer to the Holy Spirit and it says, Holy Spirit, come. Can you do that? Holy Spirit, come. Make my eyes to see. Make my mouth to speak. Make my ears to hear and my heart to love. Make my hands to reach out and touch the world with your love. When you reach out and touch, try to find someone in your family that you can gently and kindly touch with love. So we'll sing that together and that will be our closing prayer. Holy Spirit, come, make my eyes to see, make my ears to hear, make my mouth to speak, make my heart to love and my hands to reach out and touch the world with your love. Holy Spirit, come, make my eyes to see, Make my ears to hear, make my mouth to speak. Make my heart to love and my hands to reach out and touch the world with your love. Amen. That was our prayer. And now as we finish, we're going to blow out our candle. And I'm going to invite you to help me blow out the candle. So take a big, deep breath and blow it out. Thank you. God bless you. Have a great week.